In this lesson, we want to review the square root property. So in our last lesson, we reviewed how to solve a quadratic equation using factoring. Although factoring is the simplest method that we can use to solve a quadratic equation, it's not going to work in every scenario. So we need other tools that will basically work for every quadratic equation. And in this lesson, we're going to lay the groundwork for our methods known as completing the square and also the quadratic formula. So we're going to start out today by talking about the square root property. So essentially, if we have a variable like x and it's being squared and it's set equal to some number k, then we can solve this equation for x and say that x is equal to the square root of k or x is equal to the negative square root of k. So it's very important to understand why we have these two square roots here, right? The principal and the negative. So let's say we had something like x squared is equal to just the number 9. Well, if I want to solve this guy for x, again, we're always looking to undo what's being done to x. Here, x is being squared. So the opposite operation of squaring something is taking the square root. So I'm going to take the square root of each side of the equation. And if I don't go plus or minus here, I'm not going to get my full solution. We know that this index here of 2 will cancel with this exponent of 2. And I get that x is equal to the principal square root of 9 is just 3. Now think about this for a minute. Did I get the correct full solution? If x squared is equal to 9, well, 3 squared is equal to 9, but also negative 3 squared is equal to 9. So in order to get the full solution here, I've got to have plus or minus the square root of 9. So this leads to x equals 3 or x equals negative 3. Again, 3 squared is 9, and also negative 3 squared is 9. So because of the squaring operation and the fact that it takes a negative and creates a positive and also takes the positive and gives us a positive, we've got to include the plus or minus symbol when we take the square root over here on the right-hand side. Let's take a look at an example. So suppose we had x squared equals 121. So let me rewrite the problem over here. So we have x squared is equal to 121. Again, if I want to solve this guy for x, I would take the square root of this side. Let me kind of make that a little better. And I would go plus or minus the square root of this side. Okay, So we know that this guy right here is just going to be x. And this is equal to plus or minus. The square root of 121 is 11. So we get that x equals 11 or x equals negative 11. Okay? So you can leave it in this format. This is more compact where you can write it like this, x equals 11 comma negative 11, or you could use your or keyword. You could say that x equals 11 or x equals negative 11. Okay, all of these are kind of different ways to notate the same thing. But when you work with these equations, you don't need to go through and take the square root each time. You can just use your property, right? I could have started this by just saying, okay, I have x squared is equal to some number, let's just call it k. So this leads to x is equal to the square root of k or x is equal to the negative square root of k. So if I have this format, I can say x is equal to the square root of 121 or x is equal to the negative square root of 121. Again, this would just lead to x is equal to 11 and negative 11. Okay, because the principal square root of 121 is 11. And again, the negative square root of 121 is negative 11. All right, let's look at another one. So we have x squared equals 54. So again, if I want to solve this for x, again, I can use my property. I can say that x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 54. Okay, so what is 54? It's not a perfect square. So we can break this down. 54 is basically 27 times 2. We know 27 is 9 times 3. 9 is a perfect square because it's 3 times 3. Right? So you have kind of those prime factors there. So I can say that x is going to be equal to plus or minus. The square root of 9 is 3. So go ahead and pull that out. You would have 3 times the square root of 3 times 2, which is 6. And essentially, you can leave your answer like that. That would be perfectly acceptable. Or again, you could write it like this. You could say that x is equal to 3 times square root of 6, and then comma, negative 3 times square root of 6. All right, let's look at one that's a little bit more challenging. 
So we have 2x squared plus 10 is equal to 152. So how do I solve this for my variable x? Again, just like when we worked with any other type of equation, we want to start by getting the variable term with x involved isolated on one side. So how do I do that? I just want to subtract 10 away from each side of the equation. So I would have that 2x squared is equal to 152 minus 10 is 142. Now again, I want to get the x squared by itself. So I need to divide both sides of the equation by 2 so I can isolate the x squared part. So we know that this is going to cancel. And I'm going to have x squared is equal to 142 divided by 2 is 71. And now that I have it in the format of x squared equals a number, again, I can just use my property. I can say that x is going to be equal to the principal and negative square root of 71. Now, 71 is going to be a prime number, so I can't really do anything else with this. This is just how I'm going to list my solution. Or again, I can say that x is equal to the square root of 71 and then comma the negative square root of 71. Again, any kind of way that you want to notate that. All right, let's look at another one. So we have 5x squared plus 9 is equal to negative 7. So again, I want to isolate x. I want to isolate x. And to start this off, I want to isolate the term with x involved. Okay, so I'm just going to subtract 9 away from each side of the equation. This is going to give me that 5x squared is equal to negative 7 minus 9 is negative 16. Again, now I want to isolate the x squared. So I'm going to divide both sides by 5. And this is going to give me that x squared is equal to, you've got negative 16 fifths. Okay, so now we have x squared equals some number. So now I'm going to use my square root property. Let me kind of divide this up. We're going to say that x is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative 16 fifths. Now there's a few things here. We have the square root of a negative, so we're going to use our imaginary unit i to kind of simplify this. So I'm going to say that x is equal to plus or minus. Again, we know how to use i at this point. This guy right here is just going to come out as i. So I'm going to put that right here. And then times, I'm going to break up the square root into the square root of 16 over the square root of 5. Okay. Now I can simplify this further because the square root of 16 is 4. So let me scroll down a little bit. So we're going to say that we have x is equal to plus or minus. Again, the square root of 16 is 4, so I'd have 4 times i. So 4i over the square root of 5. Now, we're not done yet because, again, we have to rationalize the denominator here. So I can do that pretty quickly. I would say the square root of 5 over the square root of 5 is what I need to multiply by. In the denominator, square root of 5 times square root of 5 is 5. So we'll just put x is equal to plus or minus. In my denominator, I have 5. In my numerator, I'm going to have 4i times square root of 5. Okay, So this is basically your answer x equals positive or negative 4i times square root of 5 over 5. And again, you can break that up into two different solutions. You have 4i times square root of 5 over 5, or you have negative 4i times square root of 5 over 5. All right, let's take a look at another one. So suppose we had the quantity x minus 7 that's being squared, and it's equal to 64. Well, we can extend our property to this scenario as well. In fact, this is what we're going to end up doing when we use our completing the square method. So what I'm going to do, let me kind of show this the long way. So we have x minus 7, this quantity squared is equal to 64. I'm going to take the square root of this side. And we all know that what's going to happen is this 2 right here is going to cancel with this 2 right here. So on the left side, I'm just left with my x minus 7. But on the right side, when I take the square root, I've got to go plus or minus the square root of 64, okay? So this equals the principal square root of 64 is 8, and the negative square root of 64 is negative 8. So you could say plus or minus 8 there. Now, we're not done. So in this particular case, I've got to kind of break this up and look at both solutions. So I've got to say that x minus 7 could be equal to positive 8, then or x minus 7 could be equal to negative 8, okay? So I'm going to solve each equation here. So I add 7 to each side of the equation, 
I get x is equal to 15. Then or, I add 7 to each side of the equation, and I get x is equal to negative 1. So let's erase everything. We're going to go back up, and I'm going to check these two solutions, and we're going to think about why they work. So again, we get that x equals 15 or x equals negative 1, and we can write that in a more compact manner by just saying x equals 15 comma negative 1 like that. Now let's think about why these solutions work. If I started out with 15, then I would have 15 minus 7 inside of parentheses being squared, and this equals 64. Essentially what I'm saying is 15 minus 7 is 8. I'm saying that positive 8 squared is equal to 64. So another thing would be that I need negative 8 squared to give me 64 as well, and that's what negative 1 is going to give me. If I put negative 1 in there, what's going to happen is negative 1 minus 7 is negative 8, so negative 8 squared is also 64. So again, that's why you have those two solutions. You don't know whether it's 8 that's being squared that gives you 64, or whether it's negative 8 that's being squared that gives you 64. So that's why you've got to say that x minus 7 could be equal to the positive or the negative square root of 64. Okay, That's why you have to have those two scenarios to give you all of the possible solutions. All right, let's look at another one. So suppose we had the quantity 2x minus 1 squared is equal to 18. So same thing here. I'm going to take the square root of the left side, so the square root of this side, and again, we know that this 2 cancels with this 2. Then on the right, I've got to do the positive and negative square root of 18. Okay, so we know on the left that we're just going to have our 2x minus 1. This is equal to, on the right, if I think about 18, I know it's 9 times 2. 9 is a perfect square, it's 3 times 3. So I can pull that 9 out and say we have plus or minus 3 times the square root of what's left, which would be 2. Okay, So now I've got two different solutions that I've got to work out. I've got 2x minus 1 is equal to 3 times square root of 2, and then I've got 2x minus 1 is equal to the negative of 3 times square root of 2. So let's set those up and solve them individually. So I have 2x minus 1 is equal to 3 times square root of 2, or I've got that 2x minus 1 is equal to negative 3 times square root of 2. Okay, so let's solve these guys. So over here I've got where I can add 1 to each side of the equation, so that's going to cancel. I'll have 2x is equal to 3 times square root of 2 plus 1. If I want to solve for x, I just divide both sides by 2, and I'm going to get that x is equal to 3 times square root of 2 plus 1 over 2. And I really can't simplify that any further, so I just leave it in that format. So over here, if I add 1 to each side, this cancels. I'm going to have that 2x is equal to negative 3 times square root of 2 plus 1. Then what I can do is divide both sides of the equation by 2, and I get that x is equal to negative 3 times square root of 2 plus 1 over 2. So when we notate this, we can just put or between these two, because x could be 3 times square root of 2 plus 1 over 2, or x could be negative 3 times square root of 2 plus 1 over 2. The other method would be to use a shorthand. So I could say x is equal to plus or minus 3 times square root of 2 plus 1 over 2. Okay, so both of these ways to notate this would be acceptable. And I just want to show you real quick another way to do this. So let's erase all this. I'm going to show you kind of a faster method. So you don't need to split this up into two different equations. You can solve this without doing that. So from here, I can just add 1 to each side of the equation. I would say this is 2x is equal to plus or minus 3 times square root of 2 plus 1. So now if I want x by itself, I can just divide both sides by 2. And what do I get? I get that x is equal to plus or minus 3 times square root of 2 plus 1 all over 2. So this is a more compact form, and it's also a quicker way to get the solution, right? Again, x is equal to the positive or negative of 3 times square root of 2 plus 1 over 2. So it's two solutions. x is going to give me 3 times square root of 2 plus 1 over 2, and x is also going to give me the negative 3 times square root of 2 plus 1 over 2. All right, let's take a look at one more of these. And this problem is going to lead us into our next lesson where we talk about completing the square. 
So here we have 16x squared minus 56x plus 49 equals negative 27. How can I solve this for x? This currently doesn't look like x squared equals a number or even kind of something like this where we have the quantity ax plus b squared is equal to some number k, right? We know how to solve this one and we know how to solve this one, but we don't know how to solve this one yet. So essentially what I wanna think about is the fact that the left side of this guy is a perfect square trinomial. When we have a perfect square trinomial, we can factor it into a binomial squared, okay? So think about the fact that you could factor the left side here into 4x minus 7, that quantity squared, okay? So if we set this equal to negative 27, now we have something that we can solve, right? So essentially what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to take the square root of this side and I'm going to just kind of slide this down. I'm going to take the positive or negative square root of this side, okay? So we know that this cancels with this and I have 4x minus 7 on the left and this is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative 27. Now, to simplify here, I can pull this negative part out and let's go ahead and say this is 4x minus 7 is equal to plus or minus. If I pull that out, I get i. If I think about 27, I know it's 9 times 3. 9 is a perfect square, right? So I can pull the square root of 9 out as 3. So I'll say this is the 3i right there, then times the square root of 3. All right, so now we can solve this guy for x. And again, we can do it in a quicker way by just not splitting this up. So I'm just going to add 7 to each side of the equation here. And I'll say this is 4x is equal to plus or minus. You've got your 3i times square root of 3 plus 7. And then to finish this up and to solve for x, I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 4. And that's going to give me a final answer here of x is equal to plus or minus 3i times square root of 3 plus 7 all over 4, okay? So again, this is two solutions. We've got x equals 3i times square root of 3 plus 7 over 4, and then we've got x equals negative 3i times square root of 3 plus 7 over 4.